So what do you do when you notice your team lemming training to one side of the map? Well, you can take a passive position and maybe try and stall out the enemy team's push. Most of the time, a lemming train just loses since pushing in is, well, you're at a severe disadvantage when you're doing that, right? It can work, obviously, not always. It's a guaranteed loss, but for the most part, pushing in is a great way to lose your ship. So when you see the DDs, the submarines, everyone going to the north side of the map, maybe consider taking a passive, very safe position on the south side. And that's what we're gonna do. Something I really struggle with is playing passive. I find it pretty boring and most of the time I get impatient and I just push in and then <laughs> something weird happens, I lose my ship and then I'm not too happy. But in this match, I actually managed to stay passive for once. And you're gonna see it works out incredibly well for us. You can tell that this game would have been really, really, really bad had we not gone down here because the way this map works are the caps on the north and south side. They're very heavily favored for whoever gets the islands, right? So A cap is incredibly heavy favored for our side and the C cap is super favored for the enemy side. Just because of the island cover, getting radar cruisers close, that kind of thing. It's very, very handy to have and that's kind of how the map goes. So sending your entire team to the cap that is weaker for you, it's not gonna go so well. Our Kleber obviously spawned at A and went towards B. Uh, Balao spawned mid, went towards between B, C. Shima Hayate doing their thing. We actually have a Shimakaze coming down here. And he's going to be crucial in helping us secure, or at least do a decent job halting the enemy team from pushing here. I've talked about this a couple times, but losing three quarters of the map is a bad thing. <laughs> and uh, that seems obvious, but... The crossfires that it sets up are just so painful to deal with, and that's really why lemming trains often fail. They usually stall out, and then the enemy team is has freedom to push onto the lemming train's flank, and then it just gets destroyed. That's why it tends to lose. So this rock here is going to be our happy place. <laughs> We're going to stay here for quite some time and try and wait out this enemy team. You can see how good the cover is here. It's allowing me to hold a, well, given the map, it's a very passive position, but given our team's deployment, I'd say it's a pretty aggressive position to be in. And it allows me to stay here relatively easily. There's a Harugamo, there's a Shimakaze, there's a Gearing. These are all very scary torpedo ships. And we get to use this island to pretty much negate all their torpedoes outside of the Gearing. But like I said earlier, the Shimakaze is gonna help us a ton and the Shimakaze is going to hopefully deter or at least spot the gearing when he's trying to get on our flank. That's why I'm stopping here. I don't want to go any farther. I know there's probably Shima Torps coming through and if I push out any more, I'm gonna have a couple Montanas on my broadside and Montanas, maybe not the best tier 10 battleship these days. It's still very good, um, but it really punishes a broadside. <laughs> That's what it does incredibly well, maybe better than any other ship in the game. So we don't want to push out too far. In fact, this is maybe enough to get citadeled by him. Although we only take a little bit of damage this time. Reversing back, we're trying to take 1v1s. I talk about this all the time. Isolating fights, attempting to limit the number of people shooting at you. Shimakaze not only torps the Goliath, but also gets the gearing spotted here. And perhaps the right play is to shoot the gearing. But I actually think shooting the Goliath is way more important. The Shimakaze can survive against a gearing for a little bit. Not too long, but a little bit. He's smoked already, so hopefully that is going to help him stay alive. But the big threat is a Goliath, because if a Goliath hits a destroyer, it's gonna hit him very hard and possibly one-shot him. So we want to deter that as much as possible. We get very, very lucky to not eat a huge salvo from the Montana as we go broadside here. The gearing torps pass by, that's why I'm okay with this turnout here. I noticed the Minotaur and Monty pushing up on my uh, right flank, I guess it was. So I, it was time to leave that island, also the submarine around. We finish off the Goliath and our Shima finishes off the gearing. Like I said, this Shima is going to help out a lot this game. <laughs> so 
it's looking pretty bleak for us here. Um, getting pushed out of our island, we're getting spammed by a lot of ships, and we're down to half HP. But of course, Ohio's party trick is that fast cooldown on the heal. As long as we stay relatively well angled, we have our damage control available. As long as we don't take torpedoes, we're going to be just fine here. And with our Shimakaze on the flank, the enemy team now has the issue of being too pushed up. They don't have island cover and they have to worry about these Shima Torps, which you can see coming in again. We've already made it up to 110k damage and we got a broadside Monty. Although to be fair, he is turning out. It's very difficult to land Citadel hits on somebody turning out. So we get 10k, it's not bad. Um, you can't always rely on battleship guns to do a ton of damage to someone, like when that Goliath turned out earlier. That's why playing passive is also really, really important in a battleship, because, well, uh, speaking from experience and things that really make me frustrated with this game, is pushing in, getting into a position where your entire position and game plan and your ability to impact the game relies on you having a massive salvo on somebody who you catch broadside. But if that salvo doesn't kill them or do massive damage, your position is suddenly vulnerable and probably gonna get you killed. I get myself into these situations a lot, especially on my streams, um, where I'm not quite as focused on the game and I get myself into some pretty bad uh, positions. So that is something that is a huge benefit to playing this more passive role. It's not as fun, it's not as flashy, but in a game like this where the enemy team pushes you, it works so much better. If I had st been stuck bow in somewhere, if I had charged up to the islands around A that I said gave us a massive advantage on the A flank, it's not a free cap for spawning south, but it almost is. If I had gone there, I probably would have died. So playing in these passive positions can help negate some of the poor RNG that you have to deal with. I mean, these ships have such massive alpha damage. If they didn't have to deal with that RNG, they'd just be broken overpowered. So I understand that there are requirements for this RNG. Doesn't make it less frustrating, but learning how to deal with that is important. And that's where patience and more passive play comes in. We have enough HP at this point that we can push in again, take a reasonably big hit from the Monty and Minnow. So using our next heal. <laughs> Ohio is so nice to play like this, assuming you're not eating torpedoes or Citadel damage where of course, you lose that ability to heal things back. The ship is very tanky due to that incredibly fast cooldown heal. I'm not sure if I would call it tankier than the Montana, since the Montana gets those massive heals, and you're not getting baited into close quarter situations in a Montana as much. It's a little easier to play this, well, better <laughs> role of this mid-range ship with the Montana, since you don't have the secondary power. That's one of the big issues I find with myself playing secondary ships. I want to get them working. I want to get them going. And then I put myself into those bad positions where I rely on the guns to magically nuke something every time. And that's always going to be a bad time. The Shimakaze is back in front of us, helping us out, screening for torpedoes. Honestly, this guy's been insane. <laughs> he just killed another destroyer. Like absolutely incredible this shimikaze players so it's the two of us and maybe the cv as well with some of the spotting and damage he's put out that have helped to deal with this flank of course that's not us alone there is the fact that our team has managed to push through c they did it and i think part of that comes down to us preventing those crossfires giving them time to push through c and then because of that they're able to get some massive crossfires on the enemy team. Crossfires hurt. And I think that's what really won us the game is that ability to catch the enemy team in a bit of a trap where they're shot at from both sides. So it's gone pretty well, 220K damage and even 174 secondary hits is a pretty solid Ohio game these days for me. This is a ship that I often don't do as much damage as I could because again, I find myself dying a little bit too quick. Minotaur, pretty easy ship to Citadel at any angle because of the overmatch. Uh, it's not guaranteed, but we do manage to pick up that kill yet. And that's two kills. Now it's just the CV left, really. The Montana is, I believe, going down to our Schlieffen. So we're gonna try and kill this midway yet. But that's the game. I think that it shows patience is important. Playing passive, not too passive, but playing passive on flanks that require it 
is very important. Knowing when to recognize it. And that's why I continued to show the beginning portions of this game. If you want to go back and look at that more closely on the minimap, you'll notice some things about the DD positioning, the battleship positioning, the cruiser positioning. You'll see all those things and you need to learn to recognize them. And it really is incredibly useful to be just staring at the minimap for the first three or four minutes of the game. And it can really tell you how you should be playing and where you should be playing on these maps. Obviously, I can't tell you everywhere on every map, but just know that most maps do work like this, where there's generally going to be a more strong pushing side for your team and a weaker side for your team. Even if the map doesn't give you an advantage, your team is just naturally going to go to one flank or another. So learning which flank your team has as the strong flank and which flank on your team is the weak flank is really important knowing when to push and when to play these more passive holding positions. Worked out incredibly well this game. Unfortunately, I don't always heed my own advice I'm giving in this video, so a lot of times it doesn't quite work out so well for me. But 240k, and we're actually going to pick up this midway kill. So three kills yet, and a reasonable amount of potential damage. Unfortunately, the Confederate comes right as the game ends, so we can't even make use of Halsey's bonus there, which gives us 20% better reload. It's a ton of fun on Ohio, but it's a little hard to activate sometimes. The build is the usual Ohio build that I have. We're running into the concealment as well as emergency repair, at least for now, and we're taking something like the secondary skills. Fire prevention is incredibly useful, but playing a bit of a more passive role, I think having the extra healing. Um, if you get yourself into scenarios where you're going to take multiple fires and you need to use your damage control, um, that's a, a time where you need to play a little more passive. That's what I've been doing, but honestly, if you want the tankiest ship that's a little bit easier to play, I would honestly get rid of Concealment and take Fire Prevention, or maybe even Emergency Repair Expert. I think if you look back in my videos, looking at other Ohio, Massachusetts, or Georgia games, you're going to see that I keep constantly messing with this build. This is what I'm running right now. I'm enjoying this playstyle a little bit more since I'm trying to play a little bit more passive and not get myself into those horrible positions that lead to my death. So that's what I'm running. We're taking gun feeder just so that we can swap to the HE and become a bit of a mini thunderer. We're not that good, but the HE on the ship is no joke. And here's the upgrades we're taking. That's my build. It's not going to work for everyone. Honestly, the fire prevention thing is probably something you should pick I, instead of concealment or the extra healing. But this is the way I want to play it right now. So that's what I've done. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.